Okay, good afternoon. Welcome to the Terrace Lodge Redevelopment Fundraising Com Committee meeting. It's Monday, July 22nd. I'd like to call the meeting to order at 4.32. We'll start with the approval of the agenda. Results that the agenda for the July 22nd, 2024 Terrace Lodge Redevelopment Fundraising Committee meeting be approved as presented. We have a mover and seconder. Catherine moved, star seconds. Um, any changes before we approve any additions? I'll just clarify that for 7.2, we'll, um, we can leave it open to um, other fundraising strategies, but in particular, we'll talk about the Pamper Chef uh, selection of items from for the wish list for the catalog and the letters to sponsors. Thank you, letters to donors and sponsors for the gala. Any other changes or additions or clarifications? Okay, can I have a vote please? All those in favor? And that is carried, thank you. Next we have adoption of the minutes from our last meeting, any errors or omissions? Seeing none, can I have a motion please? Results that the minutes of the meeting held on June 24th, 2024 be adopted. Move for a seconder. Jamie, <laughs> like, Jamie moves Sarah seconds. All in favor? That is carried. Next is disclosure of pecuniary interests and the general nature thereof. Seeing none. We don't have any delegation, so we'll move on to a report. So report of financial services. Um, so the director of finance is um, away on vacation. That's a wonderful thing, but we do have a great treasure <laughs> who received some notes and from the director of finance. So Sarah, please. Uh, so um, the first is the update for the normal fundraising budget report is that new no new donations have been received uh so this report would not change from last month um so it uh has not been included in this particular uh meeting agenda um i have uh entered the information from the gala uh so that individual ticket holders uh, receive their donation receipts for 25 dollars per person um, but the actual funds were accounted for in last month's budget report um, as a side note there were some um, uh, transcribing errors when entering those so if anyone has not gotten their receipt and they were expecting one um, to let the committee know uh, in the letter to the donors of the gala, the amount raised uh, was finalized at two thousand or twenty three thousand dollars and eighty twenty three thousand eighty two dollars. So um, uh, a reflection should be for twenty three thousand as opposed to twenty five thousand. Mm -hmm. um, the Whisper Glide wheelchair swings have been ordered and payment has been sent. Uh, the payment was had to be sent by wire to the U.S. as they don't accept uh, check or credit card payment from Canada. Uh, the amount after conversion was $21,176, plus uh, there's an expectation that there may be cost for duty and unrebated HST when it crosses the border. Uh, so um, Jennifer will update as uh, those final costs uh, are understood. Uh, the bowling items are not going to require input from finance by the look um, of the agenda items. Um, so we can uh, apprise her of what she needs to find for us um, by the next meeting. Um, and uh, I think that's it at this time. Does anyone have any questions that I may or may not be able to answer? <laughs> Doesn't look like it. So um, as we mentioned in the past, eventually we'll do a separate, more fulsome report on the purchased items so that we can 
continue and, and eventually, like I said, when this committee transfers to more of a managing of donations, we can decide at the time in terms of the, uh, I wanna say even the terms of reference if we want to change that because it would change the purpose of the committee and perhaps, uh, so just something, some food for thought for now, if, um, for example, if we want to basically turn over the the funds and just say, this is it, here are the funds and off you go <laughs> and then spend uh, according to what we agreed on, or will we need um, almost like a oversight committee to facilitate decisions? And do we need committee members for that? Or is it more for staff and the residents to, um, to be part of. So so that's something that probably by September, October, we'll want to decide because as an example, just I've had a few exchanges with, uh, with Michelle and um, you can imagine that when we started four years ago, some of the items were, were they, these were, the, we came up with a catalog and a, and a target for the campaign based on cost estimates. And uh, it's four years later, some of these costs have literally doubled. So this means that it will need some sort of decision-making process to say, well, this was the catalog, this was the hope, we were hoping to buy this and this. Um, now, if we wanna buy this, it's double the cost, so what else are we not going to buy? So does this need a committee? Can that be turned over as long as there's perhaps some reporting to the community and the we're all from, you know, the donors are all from the community. So perhaps all it needs is a, is a report because really I think maybe it's the decisions of the residents and the staff who know best, but so to be decided, but just to plant that seed, it is happening. Like those decisions are, I'm not, I won't be surprised if that happens more than once. We might have other surprises where things cost less and then we say, okay, well, we, but there's going to be a constant, like the, the catalog is really kind of just a, bit of a framework and a guide. Okay, so there are no further questions or comments regarding the the uh, financial report. Do um, the motion. Uh, that the verbal report from the treasurer uh, regarding the fundraising financial update be received and filed. Mover and seconder, please. Catherine moves. Jim seconds, all in favor? That is carried. Okay, so we'll move to our fundraising strategies. So the key strategy we're focusing on right now is the, we'll start with the bowling tournament. So we've made great progress. That was a great discussion last time, even just going through the notes and all the things that, all the input that you've contributed in terms of the logistics, uh, even for donations and pledge sheets. And um, that was really, really useful. So now we're in good shape. The promotion has started. We have a poster, we have pledge sheets, we have updated the, uh, and when I say we, <laughs> through the support of the of the staff has been really, really helpful. The website is updated. So now, um, so old information has been cleaned up. You probably see if you have a look, we've left a, a placeholder for decision on the items we want to promote. We'll come back to that. But the information on the bowling tournament is there. And um, there's also room for people to donate specifically to a team. So as teams come together and get registered, then um, so the QR code, or just if you just send your potential donors to donate to terraslodge.ca, then you it's just one landing page, and then it's a select the team you want to give your pledge to. So it could be we this will be really helpful in case people may not like you may not be in contact with some people, they just hear about it, they want to donate, and then they can just go and select whichever uh, team they want to donate to. Um, so we're really in good shape. There's more um, pieces from for media. So um, Sheila is working on a social media piece so we'll be able to distribute that. So you'll be able to also put that on your uh, social media. Um, there, the pitch, we're looking at maybe an ad in the Elmer Express and maybe other I'm curious if my you have suggestions. My FM. Okay. So looking for suggestions on where else 
to if we want to do print or other advertising. It's not much print these days, <laughs> but Catherine, uh, village of public publications like Jeff Ray. So he does like hometown St. Thomas, I think it's what it's called, and then the villager. Villager. He has, he has several. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But it's villager publications is the company. Okay. Great. Anywhere else we should be? Um... Um, East Link has a community page. Oh. Like a, like on, online? Yeah, on, they yeah. have their oh. East Link channel yeah. and they put community events on there. Great. Is it easy to find? Do you need a contact? Or um, if you want to, is there something that says if you want to promote Eric. your. Eric Dolmer? Yeah. Um, there's also like, I don't, it's related to, uh, Elmer Express, but this month, again, like I know it's really popular. People pick that up all the time. I don't know if you would do that through. Have... Yeah. Is... They would have an August one. Like, yeah. Yeah. Monday, right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this month. Yes. Yeah. And probably on the inside, there's probably the editors. Um, Eric Dolmer. Thank you. Jim. Yes. There's a, a weekly, uh, paper uh, come, uh, called the Dorchester Signpost that a lot of people in Belmont uh, will get. So that might be an option to contact them too. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Got that. Did you have a contact? You you did some advertising with them before, Jim, right? A while yeah, back? we did. Yeah, yeah, okay. we did, and I I will try and see if I can find out if that, uh, as far as uh, putting an ad in or something like that, whether they will do that free of charge or uh, or mm -hmm. maybe uh, the the uh, reporter does the Belmont area could put an article in regarding what's going to be going on, and that might be the better way of doing it. Yeah, so we'd be happy to write, to do a little write-up and with the yeah. details, so that would be great. And yeah, if they want to do an ad, that's the pitch to um, others as well, is that we can do it as a donation. So they can send us an invoice, and then um, we can send them a receipt for yeah. the equivalent of the donation. So huh. it would be great if they can donate that. So it's a form of sponsorship to the event. That'd be great. Yes? Jim? Now, yeah, I'm, I'm going off the agenda just a trifle, but I won't be, we're, my wife and I are headed to Ireland the end of August, so I won't be actively, I can be actively involved the night of that, but uh, uh, we won't, yeah, yeah. so uh, I won't be able to be actively involved much prior to that. Okay, good to know. Sounds like a lovely trip. <laughs> um, so that's advertising. And after the meeting, when we wrap up um, committee members, we can stay. We can talk about more of the details of who will do what. We don't need to use the more formal portion of the committee meeting um, as far as the event planning aspect. But any other questions or comments? Like I said, I think we pretty much hit the whole checklist from... Uh, last time, as far as having the pledge sheets, there's a separate sheet for donors as well, like sponsors. And um, and we'll be looking for silent auction items, et cetera, et cetera. So it should be exciting coming together. <laughs> um, any further questions or comments? Okay, so we'll, as part of the to-do list, we can uh, include not only promoting, hoping all of us will get to be on the team if we if we can, uh, but also just encouraging other other groups. And it could be a business. It could be it's a it could be a fun a fun way to, uh, as I said, wrap up the campaign. So that's a, the other aspect we can promote is not just a donation, but also hey, how about you want to put together a team? Um, that will be a fun night. Okay. Um, 
The so next, um, why don't we talk about the Pembert Chef? Jamie, do you have a, an update on that? Mm -hmm. So um, the Pembert Chef is scheduled to start August 1st and it will run till August 31st. I had Jenna send out the, the flyer for you. You can print that off or send it to all your friends. They just have to use the QR code and it'll take them to the website and they can place their order through that. Um, Regina is also holding an open house on August 24th. The information you should be able to get from the QR code is for the timing and the address. And uh, if you have any questions, you can call. If I don't know the answer, I will find out for you. But basically, all you need to do is send it out to all your friends and ask them to do their Christmas shopping and whatever. And we should be getting 30% of the, the amount that we sell. So the more we sell, the better off we are. So is it for a specific time frame then? For From August 1st first? First to the 31st. Okay, so all sales. Yeah. Um, we'll generate 30% mm -hmm. for the campaign. Nice. Okay. So promote, promote, promote. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so just send the the poster out to your friends. You can even post it around town. So I, I know um, Amaryllis isn't here, but right. anywhere, just post it everywhere and anyone can can um, use the QR code. So Okay. Yes, we'll make sure other members of the committee, everybody knows there is clear what to do. So and, and for the open house as well, you can RSVP to Regina herself. So and it's right on the poster there. Yes. Perfect. So we'll make sure we circulate that again. Just um sometimes just uh we send an email um a few times during the month just mm -hmm. as a reminder for for each other. To send it up here. Yeah, to send it out. So some, when it's a fresh email. <laughs> It, uh, that will help. So thank you for organizing that. That's great. We can also include it in our weekly staff yes. update that goes out to all staff. Yes, that's a great idea. Yeah, just put little things like, you know, Christmas shop early and blah, blah, yeah. blah. Yep. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so that's the Friday newsletter, right? We can probably repeat it a couple of times, yeah. Step. Excellent. Um, okay, so the another action items from the last time was a letter to sponsor. So I just drafted something basic based on the update. We can tweak the draft to just say we can see uh, nearly or yes. near close to twenty five thousand dollars or um, um, the the or one just above. The one uh, thing that I thought might be good across the bottom is like the, um, if they had more information, like wanted more information about the campaign to go like put, oh, uh, of course. <laughs> put a, a website address or something yeah, across the bottom so course. that they could go in and see what's happening. I like, guess. So yeah. will you send out a list? Uh, once you have the list together, can you send it out if you want us individually to send a thank you, then we could look and go, oh yeah, this one was for me. And okay. yeah. to remember them all is, <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that was my question. Would would you prefer that um, if you reached out and got a donation, that then it would be your letter with your name? I mean- Oh, I'd be fine if it came from the committee. Because we could not centralize it and just take all the donors yeah, and then send it out. Then logistically, that might be simpler. That's fine. But maybe, I don't know if people prefer to just reach out. My understanding is that um, I haven't, Paul and I haven't been able to make our schedules quite a bit. <laughs> um, it being summer, as we were discussing earlier, it's gotten busier than most people would expect summer to be. So um, when I do have that list, it, there it has been expressed that it's not actually a complete list. So there may be individuals who we've each reached out to that may or may not be on the list. And so once you get the list, can you send it to yes, us? So yes, we remember someone that yes. was missed, we could add it. Yes. Okay. So you'll, valid, you'll put together a list, we'll circulate it, validate it, and then we'll do a centralized yes. send. 
So I can sign it and we'll add for sure. Golden rule of fundraising. It should always be an ask. <laughs> Or or like a link like, to yeah. go yeah. go find more information Easy to, to yeah. yeah. Um, I just have one question. Does it mention the kinsman in the letter? I can't remember. I don't know. It should yes. it yeah. should yes. it should it's say a, on behalf of yes, because it was a the partnership. Yes, yes. Great. Um, this is centralized. Perfect. Okay, so we'll circulate both. So when you have the list, we'll circulate the revised version of the letter with the list, and then everybody can say yes, we're good. Okay. Um, yeah, and I'll, I, I wanted to, this was just a first draft, but I want to see there's a way to also promote the the link to the bowling tournament and see if there's, you know, and. Maybe and, another. And, well, and, there's going to be a silent more, auction again. Yeah, and, build more um, enthusiasm for yeah. the the next event. Yeah. Okay, so we'll get that done. No one knows about it. They can't participate. Yeah, that's and right. the sooner we get out the thank you for the last gift, the more likely they'll give the second time. If yeah, that, just, they don't get that thank you, they yeah. might be reluctant yeah. to give again. Yes. So get on it. Uh, potentially this week. I don't know about all, but we'll see. I, I'm, I'm imminently. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure where Paul is this week. I, uh, right. We, okay. He may or may not be close. Okay. <laughs> Which is allowed. <laughs> well deserved. Um, okay. So there. So we'll get that done one way or another, and the timing is really important. So to build on the on their generosity and momentum, um, which then brings you in terms of letters, we also want to do a promotion to um, past donors, the future donors, and even for the website, we wanted to see um, what items do we want to promote. So I tried to clarify the spreadsheet as much as possible. So I don't know if it if it was clear, I know I've been looking at it for years, so I know it by heart and it's very clear to me, but that doesn't mean it and the clarity translates. Um, bottom line is that we are, uh, if we look at the catalog as is, um, we are short, so our, the goal like, is, is approximately 52,000 of items and Ideally, there's, we know there's always going to be a little bit more um, expenses, so it's always nice if we can um, add to that. So between 52 and 54,000. Uh, right now, what the rows that were at the top, um, we talked about, for example, the the, um, the stacking folding chairs, the sheds, the duet bike, um, and the balcony furniture. So that right now gives us the total. But all the items underneath, I think I've left them in white. Um, they, it looks like they're purchased only because we needed to see how we were doing in terms of the money we were raising and any money that was not assigned when, when the donor didn't specifically choose an item. So these were um, somewhat arbitrarily and when I say somewhat is because staff initially had put prioritizing. And so we assigned money based on, on priorities. And then the other thing that happened from since the beginning is that new items have been added. They're, like the duet bike, for example, was not there. So, so it looks like it's not funded now, but it's up to us really. And we can be strategic um, in terms like we can reassign money. There are things that are more difficult to raise money for that's not maybe as inspiring to give money for, um, I don't know, for a, for a chair, <laughs> for a folding chair, as opposed to um, uh, blanket warmer. I, I don't know, it's, it's up to us to strategize because we have utmost flexibility, obviously, um, and staff can help us if, in terms of priorities, but I'm wondering from your perspective, what do you think would resonate with the community that would sort of motivate because um, it's really the amount that matters as opposed to the items. We have lots of room to shuffle things around. 
Um, and yeah, because you'll see then after the white, everything underneath that was kind of that orange color. Um, those are the things that have been assigned. So we're not touching those, but there's still a quite a list uh, to choose from. Any thoughts on that? Any suggestions? Um, so the fireplace lounges, they, we have those. We don't have those. I'm confused on that one. It's in white, or is that gray? Uh, I don't have a colored version in front of me. So. I got number 97. <laughs> it's gray. It's gray. And gray means? Gray, it's funded. It's all funded. So, so anything really, I think they were the first to, to go. Well, I think yeah. so, but then. So gray, I will say, so just to clarify, uh, and again, for transparency, because this is the, the transparent list to the public as well. So there were funds that were available as part of the redevelopment which is why our total number right, decreased yeah. because, so if it's in gray, it was taken out of the campaign. Okay. It was still purchased. So it's still the plan to be purchased, but it's funded from the redevelopment, fund, like from the core budget, um, the capital budget. So, so I didn't want to lose track of those items because there was input from the residents. There was like, we really want those things. Say, okay, you're still getting those things, just not, sponsored by the campaign. So that's a good point. So, so anything in white is sort of at the top. So blue or white are the options that anything that totals about 52,000 is um, are the choices of what we could promote. Uh, the sound system, what is that? Tanya, can you speak a little bit to the sound system? That is another item that was added along the way based on your experience, I think. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. Um, so it's something that, um, well, they they have one um, that was purchased at Bobier. I think it was also through a gift. Um, and it uh, it basically allows you to have sound in different areas of the home from one central location. So during COVID, um, it was really handy because you could, you know, have bingo called, but people didn't have to be in that one space. I don't I hope I'm making sense. So, um, yeah, it it really, and also we had people outside doing a service, but people could hear it inside because of COVID. But regardless of COVID, they'd had, they've had it there quite a long time, and it's really very well used. Um, it's just a really nice sound system. And for a lot of the residents, you know, hearing, um, is an important part of enjoying programming and and um, you know having and church services any anything where you're needing to kind of hear somebody speaking or music or something being called aloud. So yeah, so um, basically it's like a, a larger scale sound system so that you know uh, it can be utilized in a larger space or in multiple spaces. I hope I'm expressing that properly. <laughs> Mm -hmm, yeah. So would it be used to play music throughout the home? Yeah, Do so it could. Like it, it, it's being used. I think that you'd use it sometimes for music, but it was used a lot for programming or for um. They I did see them use it for bingo. That was kind of one of the more creative ways was to, in bingo, just where people couldn't, you know, all conglomerate in one space or be in one shared space. But yes, you could use you could have music. Uh, in the dining spaces or whatnot. So, um, or even just in one larger space, because when you're in one space, the sound, like, so for instance, uh, at Terrace Lodge in the redeveloped area, there will be a larger, uh, you know, space where people can um, gather and and without a, a great sound system, it really does um, affect how people might participate or enjoy that, the music or the entertainment or even if you just want to play music in the background, um, or if you have a PA system, that you can hook that up to that. So if somebody's speaking, yeah. So it just really makes, it's a clearer sound from you know the different areas of the room. Michelle, I'm not sure if I'm expressing it properly, if you have anything else to add, or if you have more experience with that at Bobier. I wasn't there when they purchased it. It was prior to when I arrived, but. 
No, I think you covered it off well. It, and even to Tanya's point, um, we are going to have one large event space. But when you have a lot of individuals in that space, it's harder to hear. So it just um, it's a better equalization of the sound so that no matter where you are in the room or if you're hearing impaired, impaired it, it, the sound will be improved for the pro and mainly for programming. But it's nice because we have such large program areas outside and inside the home to be able to enhance the experience and let more people enjoy the experience instead of all having to come to one location. So what one thing if I, I remember when, when I would use that system, for instance, if you have somebody in the back of the room, you're able to play with the sound so that the people in the back, you could turn it up or down. So like if there's somebody that maybe it's too loud for them, you can turn it down a little bit. Or if there's people in the back, you know, sometimes if you're in the back of the room, you can't hear it as well. For a lot of the residents, that's a real challenge. It takes away mm -hmm. from their experience. So we were able to kind of, you know, turn it up based on where they were located. So it's great for accessibility. And the new, mm -hmm. uh, the new Terrace Lodge has several lounges too. So mm -hmm. that means mm -hmm. if there's one activity in one it could be exactly um, so yeah great thank you um does this sound system have the capability for some hearing aids to connect uh directly or no so i don't think so i i bull beer villa also had um like a, a system that was separate from that um, I believe it was separate from that. Now that said, that could be something to look into, but it, it, it was, um, it were like individual boxes and I'm not sure they could hook up to each person or certain people. And I, it may have connected to that. I, that's something I'd have to look into. I'd have to ask them, but they did have, I don't know if you remember that Michelle either. They had like a, yeah, it was kind of, a, it was a battery. It was a rechargeable system and it may have hooked to that now that I'd have to maybe ask them, but they've had it quite a long time. The system they have, I'm sure there's newer systems now that might offer that um, because yeah, it potentially I'd have to, okay. look. yeah. Thank you. That's a good question. <laughs> so if you were looking for an item, I'd like to see that item because as they age, they do have hearing impairment. And I think it's was- Accessibility of movement too. Exactly, like if and if want you go went into door, another yeah. situation where they're isolated, it would- yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's definitely could be in the top, in that sort of top three or four things. Other thoughts? So for staff, would the balcony furniture umbrellas and urns or the um, duet wheelchair bike be something you like which one would you <laughs> sway to for, for myself I I think like both of those areas are are uh you know great areas I think the duet is a really popular like from from what I've heard from and also from the residents perspective so other homes that are using the duet they're very popular and um, when I did attend the resident council here at uh, Terrace Lodge, they were very um, interested in that item. And so I did pull it up for them to see it. And they, there was a little bit of a buzz about the duet bike because it it is uh, like everything that I've heard from other homes that have it. And even just the residents, you know, being interested in that, um, that item, that to me, it's it's a great option, especially with uh, the redevelopment and the pathway around the building, because we do, you know, here we'll have a great um, area to potentially use that. So, and I think to your point, I, I've seen some videos of of it in use at in other homes. So I think part of the promo piece on our website, even a link just to see, because it, it's kind of hard to describe and imagine like a duet bike. Like <laughs> how how is that, you know, a, a thing for seniors especially? Um yeah. And maybe it's not an either or maybe it's um balcony furniture, which then we can itemize. So we can say like right now we have like 40 at 500 a piece. So sometimes it may, it's nice to say, oh, I can do one 500. So it feels like I've sponsored one balcony 
And then in that, so we could say we're looking to sponsor 40 balconies and one bike and one sound system mm -hmm. and it, like contribute towards those and really have a nice description item, um, like a nice description for the item. Maybe we start with that. Yeah, because I want to look at a shed. That's not. Yeah, it doesn't speak, feel but like the and, and, and home. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't affect the residents. So if I had to choose, Correct. I would take the shed out and take my right. sound system. Right. And and the sound system, like with the balcony furniture and the duet being outdoor items, the sound system also could partially be outdoors, right? Because yeah. we do have the, it, it will go, at least the one at Bobier has that ability, I believe, or can connect yeah. to the outdoors, so. Yeah. Yeah, so I think to your point, yeah, it's something more directly used by the yeah. residents. Great. Why don't we start with those three and make sure the description is really clear and testimonial even from staff or residents even for and like concrete examples. So what we can do also um, with the help of staff <laughs> to uh, probably promote one item at a time, like really feature one with a description, a link to a video, and then a few weeks later we promote the next one and then and so that, yeah, that gets us to uh, 60,000. Yeah. Boom. Okay. If there's consensus on that, let's start with those items and we'll use that also as the basis for the letter. And we make sure yeah. that there's a link if you want more information on those details and how important they are to residents and get us to that last mile. Um, yeah, I think those are great choices. Fantastic. And pictures, pictures, pictures. We have more video. sound system. Yeah, and video. <laughs> sound system picture will be a little, <laughs> little, hard, a little harder to kind of <laughs> imagine, but um, okay, that's super helpful. Okay, so as far as fundraising strategies, I think those are the three main ones that we have, the letters to donors, Bowling and uh, Pampered Chef. Anything else we should be discussing? And that also includes social media on, on the items and just a constant presence. So if there's nothing else, um, any other business? Looks like there is none. I don't believe we have correspondence. So perhaps we'll just move into close and discuss specific um, outreach. Motion, please. Resolved that we do now proceed into closed meeting session in accordance with the Municipal yeah. Act to discuss the following matters under Municipal Act Section 239.2. Closed meeting item number one, closed meeting minutes, June 24th, 2024, and closed meeting item number two, donor outreach update under Section B, personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees. I'm going to move in second. Catherine Lewis, Jamie seconds, all in favor? That is carried. We're on. Yeah. Okay. And we are back. So we have the motion to rise and report, please. Results that we do now rise and report. Mover and second there. Catherine moves. Jim seconds. All in favor? That is carried. And for the minutes, the resolution please. Resolves that the June 24th, 2024 closed meeting minutes be adopted. Mover and seconder. Sarah moves. Jamie seconds. All in favor? That is carried. And outreach report. Resolved that the confidential donor outreach update be received for information. Mover and seconder. Catherine moves. Jim second. <laughs> All in favor. That is carried. Okay, so date of next meeting. Um, it's summer, so I'm wondering. Uh, we have a few action items that we can work on, probably without committee, because the main decisions have been made. I'm wondering if we just need um, 
not so much a committee meeting, but more of a just an event planning meeting. So we would touch base in August. Um, the twelfth, I thought maybe. Yeah, so that would be exactly one month. We probably have a status update by then. Is that a possibility for everybody? Yeah. Great. I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, August 12th. So just for a planning of the bowling tournament. So not a full uh, committee meeting. And if that's good, then we'll put that down up to 430. That's good. Excellent. And um, as far as the next meeting of the committee, I would probably suggest then after the tournament, right? Or do, do you think we'll need another quick meeting just before for last minute details? Again, it may not need to be a committee meeting, it could be just the, uh, the planning. Do we wanna meet after or should we just plan on a date? like on September 23rd, for example. We can change it if we yeah. need mm -hmm. to. So why don't we put September 23rd as the official next date? Oh, that. you can't do that one. Okay. It'll have to be in Elmer for 6.30. Well, we can be done by 6. <laughs> the 30th? Maybe. Yeah, we could. Yeah, why don't we do the 30th and then we'll have more information from the event and do a bit of a debrief, see where we're at and then plan the the last month or so of the campaign. Okay, so September 30th. And um, meetings to plan, we'll, we'll schedule meetings to plan the bowling tournament. So for sure we said August 12th and then perhaps another one as needed just before the event. And August 12th at 4.30? At sure. Seems to work. Great, so we're ready to adjourn officially. May I have the motion, please? Resolved that we do now adjourn at 5.41 p.m. to meet again on September 30th at 4.30 p.m. We're in second now. Jamie moves, Sarah seconds, all in favor, that is carried. So the meeting is adjourned.